The stuff some companies can do can trigger a lot of anger. Just look at all of the rage over Ghost Recon recently. Then there is Blizzard Entertainment and what they did. And let us not forget the granddaddy of all corporate screw-ups, the whole Battlefront 2 debacle. But let's be clear here, it is the executives you should be mad at, not the developers. Let's discuss. Nearly 100% of the time, when it comes to microtransactions and pay to win, the developers of a game get absolutely no say in it at all. The decision to add loot boxes and pay to win mechanics to a game is made by the executives. The developers in the cubicles are powerless to do anything about it. They can take their concerns to the director or creative director. But if they don't do anything about it, the developers can't refuse to implement what the execs want. They will get them fired. And they'll also likely get blacklisted from the gaming industry. Just like in Hollywood, that is indeed a real thing. That can happen. The devs can vent their frustration in social media, but even that is risky business. We have a constitutional free speech right to criticize our employers. But if a developer is perceived as speaking on behalf of a company in social media, that can get them fired. And it has on various occasions. Working for one of these corporate AAA studios can be like walking through a minefield. So if you get mad at a company, don't get mad at the people who made the game. Get mad at the people at the top who made the bad decisions. And that brings us to the topic of this video. You can hate a company, but still like their games. I've got little love for Nintendo as a company. For a long time, they've treated content creators very heavy-handedly. They still do, only to a slightly less degree now. But I still love their games, and I'm excited whenever I see a new Zelda or Mario game. I am very disappointed in the direction Blizzard is headed as a company. But I am very interested in playing Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4. It seems hypocritical when I preach that we should send a message with our wallets. On face value, I guess you could say it it is. But while I might play Overwatch, I never once at all paid a single dime for microtransactions or loot boxes. You are perfectly free to boycott Blizzard. That is your right. But it wasn't the developers of Hearthstone who banned Blitzchung. It was the Blizzard execs who made that ill-fated decision. If you decide to join the boycott of Blizzard, you may indeed hurt the guilty. But at the same time, you must accept that your actions may cause innocent people to lose their jobs. Bethesda is the same way. I like Fallout 4 and Skyrim, yet I've never played Fallout 76. But if I did, I'd never buy anything from the Atom Shop. Same way I've never bought anything from the Creation Club. You have to think logically here. It isn't the game sales where these companies make their money. It's the microtransactions. That's where the bulk of their revenue comes from. Buying the games keeps the people in the cubicles employed. Or at least it helps keep them employed. Not paying for microtransactions? That keeps the execs from being able to buy their third or fourth private plane. You might be willing to throw the baby out with the bathwater to send these companies a message, but I'm not. I've been in the shoes of someone who got laid off without any warning. Yes, developers may be able to find new work quickly in the gaming industry, but that isn't always guaranteed. If a game is in active development, the project may not have the budget to bring on more people. That is the reality of how the gaming industry works. 
Most of the hiring for a project happens before the game even goes into development, and they're given a budget that only allows them to bring on so many people. There are lots of ways you can send a message to a game company beyond just boycotting them. You can voice your opinion online and social media, but you can go a step further. Many executives in the gaming industry have public-facing email addresses. It might take some digging, but you can find them. Many of them also have Twitter and social media accounts. You can contact your local representatives and senators if you live in the U.S. and share your opinions on the loot box and pay-to-win arguments. You'd also be surprised at how effective a letter-writing campaign can be. You also have a constitutional right, at least in the U.S., to protest in front of the game company's office. Basically, what I'm getting at here is there's no easy path to sending a message to these companies. If you're going to be an activist against exploitative business practices in the gaming industry, there is no shortcut. You're going to have to get off your lazy butts and actually do something. I know this has gone beyond what the video title suggests, but that's the nature of the problem. It isn't that simple. Few things are in life. So, can you love the games from companies you hate? Yes. Can you play their games while also sending the companies a message? Also. Yes. I've been Mike Zorch. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Namaste. This and other videos can be found on our alternate channels on LBRY and BitChute. Links are in the description below.